Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, he's the boss. Tony Danza is here with stories from his Broadway smash hit. And new marriage drama for Chloe and Lamar. OKTV OK has the inside scoop on why the couple's divorce might be on hold. Plus, Wendy's got you covered with all of today's hottest topics. Now, here's Wendy! It's time for Hot Topics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> Breaking news, everyone. I love you more. The, uh, the new season, the new cast of Dancing with the Stars has just been announced. First of all, I can't believe the show is still on TV. All right, here are a few of the contestants that I know, because there are many that I don't, maybe you do. Patti LaBelle. Patty is uh, 70 years old. She's a legend, and my only question is, why would she be doing this show? <laughs> like, she, she, doesn't need, she doesn't need Dancing with the Stars. Miss LaBelle, you need to start teaching some of these girls how to sing. <laughs> there are so many, I mean, she, Patty to me is, um, and I know, I know that Gladys Knight did Dancing with the Stars last season, but she didn't need to do it either. Like, she is a, le to me, it's not a place for Patti LaBelle, but, and, and can, she, can she dance? Because if you, <laughs> no, Miss LaBelle, because I've seen you in concert. You come out on stage, you kick your shoes off, <laughs> right? And then you flutter from one side to the other. That's not dancing. As a matter of fact, can you dance in heels? Because I know I can't. I can barely walk in heels. <laughs> Will you be wearing shoes? All right, well, we'll be watching. Anyway, also, um, Red Foo from LMFAO is going to be part of the new season. Uh, Red Foo is the son of Barry Gordy. He reminds me on Dancing with the Stars of like Mike the Situations situation when he was on, kind of like jokey. And he's 39. I don't know whether he can dance or not either, but um, Suzanne Summers. See, I like that. I like that one too. Friend to the show, Suzanne Summers, she's 68 years old and she will take it very seriously. She's partnered with my Tony Dovolani. And you know. Tony is very competitive. I think that Suzanne, I predict her to win. Look, this is an early prediction. I predict that she'll win. Um, also, the first openly gay football player, Michael Sam. You like that? Just do this, look. You, he has something on his teeth. I don't know what that is. It's, a, it's, a, it's a not lipstick, Suzanne. <laughs> Stupid. He's a nice looking man though. Score one for the gays. You guys got a good one there. Hmm. Although, I don't think it's the best idea for him to be on Dancing with the Stars because he's trying to get back into football. So I think if you focus on the football as opposed to the Dancing with the Stars, maybe we get some place here. Although, as long as he's going to be there, I think that if Suzanne doesn't win, then not that Suzanne, I'm talking about <laughs> Suzanne Summers. If Suzanne Summers doesn't win, then I think that uh, Michael Sams could possibly take the mirror ball because you know the football players 
of the athletes, they're used to hard training and they're light on their feet and whatnot. You remember Emmett Smith won, my season Heinz Ward won, and Donald Driver won. So yeah, so he's playing. Um, all right, who else is on uh, Dancing with the Stars, you ask? The one that I wanna watch. No, I don't predict she'll win, but I've never heard her speak and I wanna know more about her, Rumor Willis. I know, that's a good one. I would like to know her demeanor. Does she dance? Does she play fair? Is she a quitter? Is she a screamer and yeller? You know, I don't know anything about her. She wants to be an actress and, um, you know, in our morning meeting, it was brought up to me, do you think that Dancing with the Stars will help her in terms of being an actress? I said, no, because she's got all the help. I mean, if she can't be an actress off having two famous parents like Demi and Bruce, then perhaps she needs acting lessons. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know why she's on Dancing with the Stars. All I know is that it's good for hot topics, right? Yeah. It's very good, it's very good. Um, and it's also very good for the audience because I wonder if Bruce and Demi will support. I told my staff this morning, I was like, yeah, I think in my mind, Bruce and Demi will show a united front and they'll both be there to support her certain nights. And also um, Ashton Kutcher, I know, still has a close relationship with uh, Young Rumor, but I don't think that this is a place for Ashton, you know, on account of if you, if you love your mother, Rumor, you would have se severed ties with him a long time ago. That, that's all, you know, the ex-husband. The ex you know, loyalty is to mom, always. <laughs> all right. So those are the only people that I know. Um, there's a, an Olympic gymnast, uh, Nastasi Lukin. Do you know who that is? Okay, do you know Charlotte McKinney? No. Well, she's some sort of Carl's Jr.'s model. She's the next Kate Upton. Yeah. Um, do you know who Riker Lynch is? No. Me neither, he's on Glee. <laughs> do, look, do you know who this uh, little 14-year-old uh, Willow Shields is? No. She's from the Hunger Games, me neither. I don't know who that is. <laughs> um, and the guy from Shark Tank, I've never seen that show, but do you recognize him? Oh, okay, you recognize him. So there you have it, everybody. Season 20 of Dancing with the Stars premieres Monday, March 16th on ABC. <laughs> did you watch the Fashion Police last night? Yeah. Did you really watch the Fashion? <laughs> Clap if you watched. See? You're the liars. No, did you? No, all I'm saying is I didn't watch either, I was asleep. But I can tell you that Juliana Rancic is getting slammed for an off-color comment that she made last night. Well, people were outraged over what she said about Zendaya's hair. Uh, just take a look and then we'll talk. I love, I love Zendaya's style and I love when she has the little hair. She just had it. I think this, she's such, she's just such a tiny frame that this hair to me overwhelms her. Like I feel like she, she smells like patchouli oil. Oh. <laughs> or weed. Yeah, maybe weed. <laughs> you see, people are very, very sensitive these days. So you always have to watch what you say. Now, when I heard the, the remark about the grease, I thought she, that was a black thing. And when I heard the remark about the weed, I thought that that was just like the stereotype of people who lock their hair up, whether you're black or white. Either way, um, it was really off colored. Um, Zendaya posted a long letter and she was calling Julie, look how long it is. Okay, well. She posted, <laughs> look. And some of the things, is that some of the things she's saying is she's calling Juliana outrageously offensive and ignorant and some other things. And it wasn't a read, it was more like um, a nice letter from a nice young lady, you know, telling an older lady off. But it was, in, in my opinion, if you're gonna clap back, you've got to learn how to read, honey. <laughs> That was not a clap back. That was kind of like, you hurt a young girl's feelings, Miss Rancic. You should have read Juliana for filth. <laughs> There's just so much you can do with this.
<laughs> um, in terms of that. But anyway, so Juliana did apologize later on. She said she was referring to bohemian chic look, not race. See, that's the problem is that you, maybe she meant it, maybe she didn't mean it, but either way, you just always have to watch what you say. It's such a slippery slope being on TV. Oh. <laughs> Um, uh, good luck to you, Zendaya, and good luck to you also, Juliana. So, the results are in about the Oscars ratings, hosted by Neil Patrick Harris. Not good. Well, I don't blame um, Neil, though. I just blame that these are movies that people haven't seen. The lowest ratings in six years. Yeah. Now, mind you, low for the Oscars is still higher than most shows. I mean, there are not many shows that get, you know, 10 million, you know, 15 million viewers in one night. But, so low is relative. But um, my thought about it is, first of all, these are movies that nobody has seen except for one major one. And what movie did everyone see? American, American Sniper. Sniper. Yeah, we were gonna go see. Like we were gonna go see that on Saturday night, but then it started snowing, and I just wanted to take my clothes off and get back in the bed. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Are you? A, oh. <laughs> I don't know why they're clapping. <laughs> um, um, I haven't seen any of the movies, but I'm not really a moviegoer anyway. But I also feel like, in addition to these being movies that a lot of people didn't see. I also feel like celebrities are everywhere now, so it's not a region, reason to watch. You know, once upon a time when I was a little girl and I, I actually did go to the movies, watching the Oscars was a family affair. Uh, you know, we would sit with our snacks and we'd watch, ooh, it's Cher. <laughs> oh my gosh, how handsome is young Richard Gere? And you know, back in the day. But now you can turn on your computer, you see, uh, you know, your celebrities every place. They're in every magazine. They're on every magazine cover. They're, I mean, celebrity culture is not a big deal like it used to be back in the days of La Liz Taylor. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Did you watch? No. Clap if you watched. <laughs> well, we took a poll on wendyshow.com to find out who you think should host next year. Um, and we put some names up there as suggestions. We said Ellen, Kevin Hart, Will Smith, Tina Fey and Amy Pollard, Chris Rock, Justin Timberlake. And guess, no, I'm not. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and the person that won is the exact person that I picked, uh, Justin Timberlake. And here's why, here's why I think he'll be great. First of all, I'm not a musical person. Like I like Neil Patrick Harris, but I don't like top hat and cane music. You know, like, mommy. <laughs> like, and that's what he does, it's more Broadway. You know, I like more like JT, like if somebody's gonna break out into a song, let me snap my neck to it. Like, let, let me, <laughs> I'm just saying. So I think he'd be really good. He's funny, he's likable. You know, he can break out into a song, but it'll be like a modern song that'll make us all be a part, not, you know, some old school song. Um, and then the other names that were suggested, well, Kevin Hart, I bet you he wants to. He's not ready, I don't think. I don't think Kevin Hart's ready. I don't, I don't think he's ready. Um, Will Smith was also on there. You left that off the list. I think Will Smith would be good. Yeah. Easy to look at, knows everybody, likable guy. Um, then again, maybe they don't need a host. There are some award shows that don't have hosts. I don't know. I think award shows are going the way of like the daytime Emmys. They're not even on TV anymore. You know, they're all online, the daytime Emmy Awards. So anyway, Oscars, I guess we'll see you next year. <laughs> By the way, by the way, you won't believe who Common celebrated his Oscar with. I love this, his ex-girlfriend Serena Williams. <laughs> Serena looks a little turned up right here, right? They were at the Vanity Fair party. He's all hugged up on her. His actual date to the Oscars was his mom. And, and yeah, but that was the ruse because, yeah, there's, hi, Mrs. Common. 
she really likes Serena, so I think that this is a go. Serena recently put it out there that she doesn't have a boyfriend, but not by choice, that you know, she would love to be in love and you know, make that the next chapter in her life. And I remember I met Mrs. Common um, one night here in New York. We went to something to support Serena. And I was in the audience. Mrs. Common watches our show, so how you doing, Ms. Common? <laughs> um, but um, also, she really likes Serena. Like, this is not the girlfriend that a mother does not approve of. You should have seen her beaming and clapping at her son's then girlfriend, Serena. I smell this relationship back on. Yeah. Because, you know, to me, Oscar night for the celebrities is like New Year's Eve for many of us. You have to watch who the first person is that you kiss and watch who you spend it with because that speaks volumes about what you feel about that person. So the person that you get it in with on Oscar night, <laughs> that is your boo. So you are now back together. Thank you. <laughs> Did you hear about this Brian Williams thing with his daughter? So his daughter, Allison Williams, you know, she's the actress. Um, she apparently is postponing her wedding because of her dad's controversy. Let's see, I love you, daddy, but you should have kept your mouth shut. I'm still getting married in September. <laughs> that, that's not self, it's like, okay, the wedding is not until September. I think that um, the people that you invite to your wedding are supposed to be the closest people in your life. So they would automatically be civilized enough to know, do not ask my dad anything about the controversy. And they would comply, these are your closest people. Also, the paparazzi with long lenses, they'd be taking pictures of you all anyway, but they're not gonna talk to Brian because you were gonna usher him in and usher him out and that's it, you know what I mean? I don't know, I just feel like maybe Allison has cold feet so she was looking for an excuse. <laughs> To post, well, you know how that is sometimes when you're engaged and you're not sure whether you really want to get married, but you've accepted the ring and now you've made the date and your mom bought a dress for herself already. <laughs> you know, that mother of the bride dress where they try to outdo you. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know. I, personally speaking, I would still go through with this wedding. I think that even if you postpone the wedding, this scandal's gonna fo fo follow your fault. Follow your father <laughs> un, uh, for, for quite some time. I mean, this is the most trusted newsman in the world until, well, the scandal, and now it's um, Lester Holt. Uh, uh, clap if you would postpone your wedding. You selfish people. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh. I totally thought you were sitting in judgment of me again. <laughs> but none of you was, would postpone your September wedding because your dad's behind in a sling? If anything, this is a terrific thing to take everybody's mind off of it. And as a father, Brian Williams, you should insist that your little girl go on with her happiness. She shouldn't be a part of because of that. You, yes. You are my people. Cameron Diaz's husband did something that uh, I always warn people against doing. He got her name tattooed across his chest. <laughs> but here's the thing. <laughs> but here's the thing. His chest looks so dirty. <laughs> All those tattoos, disgusting. Okay. I don't mind him getting this tattoo, only because like, if me, if me and you get a tattoo across the chest, chances are we might not have any tattoos there so you can clearly see you know, his or her name. But this right here, you have to squint to make it out. <laughs> Number one. Number two, notice how he got all those swirls. You know what the swirls are. The swirls are in the event of divorce. Just keep it swirling. <laughs> right? Right, right? And of course, of course, if they got divorced, he can just take the N off and buy himself a Camaro and, and, <laughs> and you know, talk about how he loves his car. It's, there's a lot going on right here, right? The tooth. Well, if she likes it, I love it. Congratulations, Cameron.
Looks like you got yourself a man in love. Lady Gaga is talking about the details of her engagement, how it all went down. She says that um, her fiance Taylor got down, on, hold on, because I'm about to show you the most beautiful ring in the world. Hurry up, come, come back to your TV, don't walk out of the room. <laughs> no, come, come back, you, I've never seen a ring more beautiful, but don't show it yet. I want to do a drum roll build up. All right, you know I love drama. <laughs> look, look, uh, she says that Taylor got down on one knee and proposed, but not with a diamond. He first proposed with a raspberry ring pop. And then after she said yes, he pulled out the real deal. Now show the most beautiful ring in the world. Drum roll. <laughs> Go. <laughs> no. No, no, no. No, you guys. No, no, no. Come back, don't walk away, look. <laughs> this part of the ring we've all seen, which I think is absolutely gorgeous, but the only thing that tops the top of the ring is the turnover. Look at the back! <laughs> okay, it says T for Taylor loves Stephanie, Aww. right? Then notice all the diamond detail up here. I mean, if you got it, why not? Although for most of us, the ring in the back, these diamonds would be stay full with meatloaf, <laughs> right? <laughs> and ear schmutz from our kids. Is that not the most beautiful ring you've ever seen? This is, she wins, she wins. Keep clapping, we've got more great show for you, everybody. The all is entertaining. Tony Dance is here, he's starring in the inside scoop on Chloe and Lamar's drama and the nasty feud between Bobby Brown and his daughter's boyfriend, Nick Gordon. So grab a snack and come on back. On an all new Wendy, I'm breaking down hot topics with the always outspoken Piers Morgan. More money, less problems. Our girl Nicole Lappin brings tips to hold on to your cash. Save that money, honey. Tomorrow on an all new Wendy. It's time for the inside scoop. We are getting serious about some juicy stories here from OKTV. OK Say hello to Julie Alexandria. All right. No time for clapping. Hit it. OK, so it is possible, you guys, that Khloe Kardashian might be getting back together with her ex-husband, Lamar Odom. Oh, you guys are winning. And yes, some cheers. Yes. And some cheers. You see, they really love each other. I know. They really love each other. And Lamar Odom loved Chloe way before she was famous. And Chloe loves Lamar. Went out when he's not doing the he's, drugs, I, allegedly. I love them being back together. You I do. just need him to sober up. Right. Because I think that his, his getting high was the demise of a lot of outside stuff, including infidelity and all kinds of stuff. And I don't know who he's surrounding himself by, but you know the, the, the white guy, his childhood friend? Mm -hmm. I never liked him for Lamar. There's something, <laughs> there was something about him, the kid from Queens who moved out there with Lamar. Well, you know, they're kind of keeping it open because they filed for divorce back in December of 2013, yeah. but they never signed the papers. Right. Now, of course, she's been linked to French Montana. As well she should. <laughs> she's kind of moved on, but she's leaving the door open. Sources tell me that there have been rendezvous and hookups, but they've been very careful not to be seen in public together because they want to work it out and they want to wait. They don't want to be photographed in public. Her friends and family, they're very concerned. Of course, she's very close to her sisters and they don't want to see her dredge down the way she was before they're when never, she was with him. They're never happy for her. If she dates French, they're not happy. I mean, they're, well, they're never... very protective. <sighs> I don't care. I would like to see Lam Lam and Chloe get back together. And I do think I do think that it's very healthy for her to have dated as much as she wants in between the separation time so that she realizes what she had in Lamar when he's sober. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Agree. Okay. Yes. Good luck, Chloe. You too, Lamar. All right, get to it. Okay. So 
Here's the big story. So Nick Gordon, who's Bobby Christina's boyfriend, has been railing against Bobby Brown, Bobby Christina's father, on Twitter, alleging that he's an absentee father, that he's only seen her four times in the past five years, and that he's really just after Bobby Christina's money, which is the inheritance she stands to get left by her from the late, late great Whitney Houston. Right. Now, why is he doing this? Because Bobby Brown has put down some strict guidelines and stipulations on what Nick Gordon has to do if he wants to see Bobby Christina as she lies in a coma in the hospital. I mean, this, this is the third story, week, right? The third week that she's been in the coma. This story is like ripped from the pages of a soap opera, but it's actually happening. But Nick Gordon is refusing to meet the guidelines that Bobby Brown has laid down, one of which is that he actually meets with police and talks to the cops because there is a suspicion that foul play is involved and Bobby Brown thinks that Nick Gordon may have something to do with Bobby Christina's current condition. Now, there is a long history of family drama here. Bobby Christina's aunt, Pat Houston, actually has a restraining order against him because allegedly he threatened her family. So you can only imagine what that scene would be like. Yeah, if they're he, all he put, in the hospital. He put guns in the picture and went on social media to threaten the family. But this he, is the messiest. I'm glad you're here to tell it because I can't speak. <laughs> I can't. Well, it's very upsetting. I, I can't. It's very I can't upsetting. Can't with this. But speaking of lashing out on Twitter, he did tweet that if he only has the chance to be in the same room as Bobby Christina in the hospital room, and if she has a chance to hear his voice, he says that she will wake up. I mean, at this point, you have to think anything you know, will not help, right? What? You know what? When people are in comas, you try everything. As long as she's still there and they haven't pulled the plug and. She's been in this coma for three weeks. Mm -hmm. If, in fact, Bobby had a strained relationship with his daughter, then Nick, perhaps, was the only family member who saw her on a regular basis because they were living together in that condo, okay. which means it might work. Maybe stranger things have happened that if he goes in the hospital room, escorted by the state police or the marshals or whoever, and talks to Bobby Christina, maybe she, she, maybe she will move a finger. Maybe? Maybe, I mean, at this point... Do you understand? Point, absolutely. And at this point, they would take anything. You know what? At this it's point. too bad they weren't really married as opposed to duping us and telling us you're married. This is why marriage... This is the difference between being married and being a baby's mother, girls. <laughs> well, when you're married and you get in there, you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely, because then he would have visitation <clears throat> rights. Marriage isn't for everybody. That's why the laws need to change, though. <clears throat> the laws do need to change. If, uh, a mess. Well, right now, she is still in the hospital in a coma, like I said, at Emory Hospital in Atlanta. And our thoughts and prayers are with her and the entire family. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about something happier. <laughs> Tay Diggs and Idina and their divorce. Right now, normally you wouldn't say happy and divorce in the same sentence. Right. But in this case, it actually is a good thing. Now, these two are going about it the right way. Hollywood, take note here, okay? Everybody take note. If you're going to get a divorce, do it like this. Uh -huh. They are taking sole responsibility for themselves. They are going to be co-parenting. They are not accepting spousal support. They're not accepting child support. They are going about this on their own. They don't want to deal with lawyers or red tape. They both feel they're both successful on their own. They don't need each other's money. They just want to focus on their child. So good. Right? So good. So good. Refreshing. I, I, um, I... I feel like divorce and stability should be in the same sentence more often. Congratulations to both of you for working that out. I like it. I like it a lot. Thank you, Julie. Your stories were so juicy, Julie. <laughs> Thank you for more uh, on these juicy stories, everybody. Check out OKTV. OK Give it up again for Julie Alexandria. Up next, the one and only Tony Danza is here. Everybody stars in a terrific new Broadway musical. It's called Honeymoon in Vegas, where he's bringing audiences to their feet. Please welcome the one and only Tony Danza. Saying hi to the crowd. Oh, I how you doing? Yeah. Hey, no, not how you doing. How you? How you uh, this is Italian how you Brooklyn. Yeah, how you doing? How you doing? Oh, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Here at Wendy, it's how you doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's nice to see you Thank again. Thank you. Nice to be back. It's hi, been everyone. a. It's been a moment. It's been a while. You are 
Um, while handsome is what you're supposed to say about fully formed men, mm. you are adorable. Oh, thank you. Like, it, it, you know what I mean? You remind me of, um... It's always you're... nice to hear. Yeah, no. <laughs> you, re you're, you have boyish good looks. You remind me of, uh, like, Joey Lawrence's older brother. Ah. They both remind me kind of... Joey's a good kid. I he's like a, good he's kid a good kid, too. Kid, yeah. And another one, adorable. Ah. So, did you watch the Oscars? Yes, I did. Did you like it? Um... Yeah, well, I mean, it's a uh, it's it's an award show, yeah. so it's, it can only be so great. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, it uh, it, uh, it was a, it was a long way to Tipperary. Let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Would you ever host an award show, or I'd, have you? Uh, ever? Oh, I've, I've I've hosted a bunch of shows. Yeah. Called the People's Choice and. Uh, but I, I would love to do it. Yeah. I would love to do it. Yeah. Are you um, Are you living in New York? I, mean, I live in the greatest city in the world, New York City. That's what I say. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it's so bad. So you're back. You're not just here for Broadway. No, no. I uh, I moved back about five years ago, and um, and it's it's just the greatest. You know, it's it's the, the city is just so exciting all the time. It's one of the places. Even when it's freezing. Like yes. It is now. Yeah. But it's one of the only places in the world, I think, where highly recognizable people like you can absolutely walk the streets and well, nobody bothers well, I you. Have the, I, I sort of have the perfect amount of fame. Yeah. See, there's really only two times you want to be a celebrity. <laughs> let, me, let me clue you in on this. When? There's only two times, a restaurant uh. and a hospital. <laughs> Those are the two times. Do you get a table or a bed? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's number one. And then if you can do that and still ride the subway, you, then you're cool. you go down in that hole? The hole? Yes, I go down into the... Yeah, yeah, wait, let me show you. Here, look, wait, there it is, baby. There's a metro car. A metro car. <laughs> I, even, I even have... Oh, yeah. And I have an unlimited one, too, and just I, in case. Just I, in case. Yeah. It's so funny. Tony Danza holds his money in Metro Card in a clip that we, yeah, this that is, we used to... Yeah, it's really, really, uh, you know, but functional. It's, it's, it's functional. nice, though. Celebrities, Utility. they're just like us. No, well, you know, let me tell you something. The great thing about New York is the brush. You know what the brush is? No. The brush is when you brush against people. Oh, yeah. You brush against people. You, can, you're on, you know, you're in a subway car or on a bus, you're probably be around more people than you would be around in, in, in close proximity yes. in, in L.A. in about a week and a half, yes. two weeks, you yes. know? I mean, really, the only time you get to brush in L.A. is when somebody gives you the finger from their car. <laughs> <you know? laughs> so, um... You know, <laughs> we know you from Taxi yeah. at first. Right. That was your big breakout role. Yeah. But, how was... Yeah, thank you. you know, I just want to tell you, so we're doing this show, Honeymoon in Vegas, on Broadway, and, and it's, 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 it's so terrific. But one of the great things was we opened January 15th, and everybody from Taxi, my whole, the whole cast, and even Jimmy Brooks, the producer, the producer. and Jimmy Burroughs, the director, picture. they all showed off. Oh, there it is. That yeah. is unbelievable. And you want to know what... Um, I love that picture. I so love much. this picture. You are, you are all still alive. You're healthy, and uh, and we're all still together. And you're all still together. You know, and most of you have been on this show already. Chris, Lo Chris yeah. Lloyd said, "You know, we still get together on this show." He says, "I've been on other shows. We don't still get together." But that's, this that's this nice. group, there was one. Uh, there was talk that we hadn't been together like this in so long that Mary Lou couldn't remember the last time yeah, we were. Yeah, because she's know. got one of those memories where those she remembers memories. everything. But it, these are the people that I absolutely started with. And so they all came to the Broadway show. This and is it was how thrilling. civilized people act. Now, also, Judith Light Judy showed came, up. Judy yes. and, and, um, and, and Danny. Danny. And Danny Pintaro. And da Danny Pintaro. There they are. I mean, that... Uh. You know, Tony. Though. It was one of the greatest nights I've ever uh, I've ever had. Did you, you know, cry? I did cry, and I'll tell you, I had another great night. I had one of the greatest nights of all time. My son, uh, I have an older son. He's 44. He just turned 44 Are you in, in January. Yes. Got off to a quick start. In any case, oh, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> in any case, he's got two boys. Uh -huh. He's got uh, Nicholas four, uh, nine, and uh, Lucas three. Yeah. And he brought his wife and his kids to see the show. Yeah. Now. Uh, you know, they had to come from California. It was a big thing. They stayed in my apartment. We had a great time uh -huh. you know, with the kids. But um, if you would have told me 44 years ago uh, that this kid would be with his sons watching me in, on Broadway, it was, yes. it was pretty heady. And I could see them from my audience. See, what we did from, my, from the stage, what we did was we took a shot. We put the three-year-old and the nine-year-old. The nine-year-old we didn't worry about. But the three-year-old in the audience. So uh, my son uh, texted me uh, from the audience. I was backstage and said, Dad, 
theatergoers are looking askance at us <laughs> because they saw this three-year-old. They go, "What? Well, who brings a three-year-old to a play? Well, the good news is he doesn't make a sound. He doesn't make a sound except to laugh, and he watches the show, and they love the show. And that's what's great about the show, that you can, yeah. you can go to this show and enjoy it with your kids as opposed to how take your kids. Wait, wait, wait. Let me give you the punchline. Okay. Two weeks... Two weeks go by. Two weeks go by. They go back to California. Two weeks go by. She called my daughter-in-law. Julie calls me. She says, you won't believe what just happened. I'm sitting here with Lucas. I'm at the uh, table working in the kitchen. He's sitting on the floor in the living room. The, the other two are out. And he says over his shoulder, Mom, we got to call Betsy. Now, Betsy is the name of the character in our show, Jack and Betsy. So she says, Betsy? Who's Betsy? Is it a schoolmate? You yeah. know, she can't figure it out. Finally, he says, no, Grandpa's friend, Betsy. He remembered the show From two the weeks show. later. That's amazing. Um, how, many, how many times have you been on Broadway? I've been on Broadway, what, five or six times. Now, do you... Twice in a musical. Uh -huh. I did The Producers. I did Max Bialystok in The Producers. Uh -huh. It's a little different in Italian. Um, uh, but, uh, and I've done a bunch of plays. And you are getting rave reviews, Honeymoon in Vegas, yeah. when it opened. Um, you, you had your opening party, and then you all waited around for the review. Yeah, that's what you do. You, you, you do the show, and then you go to the, to, to the party, and you uh, wait for the review, and you hope the review is good. And the review, review comes the review out, like, two good. hours later. Yeah. And so you're getting ovations everywhere. Yeah, please, you. you know, I think we got tickets for everybody in the show, everybody here. Well, as a matter of fact, everyone's going. Let's see the show. I, I, wait, wait. I get, I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Come see it. You A won't believe it. Good time for everybody. Give it up for Tony Danza, everyone. Honeymoon in Vegas. It's at the Nederlander Theater on Broadway. Ask Wendy is next. That deserves an award. See how you can pull off the best looks from the red carpet. And Quavinjane Wallace talks Jamie, Cameron, and Annie. Doesn't sound like such a hard knock life to me. <laughs> Thursday on an all new Wendy. How you doing? I had the most magical time at Walt Disney World Resort, and you can too. From thrills and chills to spa time tea time and me time there's something for everyone watch the show weekdays through february 26th look for the word of the day then go to wendyshow.com and enter for your chance to win a walt disney world vacation from me <laughs> I have um, my husband and I. We uh, caught one of our neighbors cheating on her husband. <gasps> Juicy. I mean, <laughs> around town in different parking lots. Oh. Stop it. Yes. <laughs> Wait, where do you live? <laughs> because it's cold out. In Tom's River, <laughs> New Jersey. <laughs> wow. Now, my husband knows her husband. I'm not very friendly with her. Okay. But he wants to tell the husband. I told him I want to stay out of it. Mm -hmm. mm. But so why 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 aren't you friendly with her? Just because you're well, not. We're not very. Our kids are a different age. Oh, we're gotcha. not very you know friendly. But my husband has spoken to his uh, uh, her husband a few times. You know. Yeah, yeah, work. neighborly, neighborly. Yeah, of course. Okay, so she's cheating on him, and your husband yes. wants to be a Budinsky. Exactly. And the first time, and the first time we did caught that we g got her and this other person, my husband videotaped it. Stop it! <laughs> You're gonna stop in the parking lot. In the parking lot. Yes, yes. So. He's like, I'm going to mail it. I'm putting it in the mailbox. I'm putting it. I said, no, you're not. I'm not getting Because this lady's a little, I hear her. She's a little you loud. You know what? It's their neighbors. You're stuck living there. Do they live like across the street or three Naturally, houses down? Maybe I would say six. Stay houses. out of it. It's just okay. juicy, but just stay out of it. Yeah. But it's just juicy. I just don't want to. I would. You would think it would be the other way around, but yeah. he wants to. I just don't want to. No, him. stay out of it. Okay, so stay out of Tell it. Tell your husband to save the tape. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. God. More Ask Wendy after these messages. Look. Make your feed a little more fabulous. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for hot topic updates, candid pictures, and of course, behind the scenes dish. Get in on the conversation today. Everyone have a seat except for 
are you? How you doing? Oh, how you doing, Wendy? Um, yeah. <laughs> Better now. That's right. I'm Greg. Um, so, my mother's been remarried for about seven years now, yes. but none of us really like her husband, and it's getting worse and worse. She's turning 60 this week. I love her. But we're throwing a big party, and he, no one wants to come because he's going to be there. So, we were wondering, is it too late for, like, an intervention, or what do I do? I want my mother to be happy. Your mother is happy. She it's is you happy. who's not happy. It's me who's That's right. All right. So you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna fake it. You're gonna fake it. I'm fine. Yeah, it's the family I'm worried about. Gather them together, okay. Craig, and it starts with you. Yeah. All right. That's good. Don't break your mother's heart. I couldn't. Why don't you like this guy? Uh, because I don't think she's as happy as she says that she is, and I can read her like a book. Well, why so my mother and I are like this. Why don't you close. drop over for a cup of tea and t and talk to her? I could do that could after do her that. birthday, because maybe yeah. she maybe get maybe she the get through the birthday because maybe there's she needs to purge to somebody and not an intervention, but maybe you, you. Just like and one you're person. the one to do it. I think so. Okay, very Thank well. You, Wendy. You're very welcome. Uh, Instagram is next, everybody. Don't go far. doing now's your chance to win a walt disney world vacation from me go to wendyshow.com through march 1st to enter and the word of the day is yeti well it's time for our instagram look of the day it's uh where wendy watchers get a chance to show off their version of celebrity trends this week's instaglam is presented to you by america's first shimmery liqueur it's called vinique the celebrity look of the day is allison williams wearing a, ca a camel coat now if there's one thing i feel everyone man or woman needs in their wardrobe it's a nice wool camel coat so our instagram wendy watchers are showing us their twist on the trend now here's Nadja in maryland looking fierce and fabulous Fierce. With the leopard and the white, the whole ensemble. Uh huh. And Katie's in Brooklyn. She paired hers with, uh huh, her camel coat with a denim and, and plaid scarf. Nice, Katie. Um, and Kathleen is in Connecticut and she is rocking it. I love the camel coat with the camo leggings. You're all looking fabulous. And to keep the ladies shaking and shimmering, we're sending you all a Vinique Beauty Box valued at over $125. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for your chance to be my Instagram look of the day. We'll be right back. with my people. I want to thank Tony Danza for being here. It's so nice to see you again. Also, OKTV's OK Julie Alexandra. Thank you for coming, my co-host, my fabulous studio audience. And, wide, and I hope you had a terrific time. Tomorrow, the always outspoken Piers Morgan stops by. Plus, our friend Nicole Lappin is joining us with some great money advice. I love you for watching today. And I'll see you next time right here on...